Hi everyone, good evening or good day, wherever we're at, at this time. We're here at the Medicine Wheel Garden at Heart Lake Conservation. Um, this is a Medicine Wheel Garden in Brampton. It's a garden that's been here uh, for 10 years. We've been looking after it, uh, doing teachings, doing planting, doing harvesting, and um, we're very honored, very proud to be, uh, to be here. We're also called the Four Colors Drum Circle and what that does, it represents all of creation. So when we come to the medicine garden here, um, we're all one, we're all one group. There's no segregation, there's no division, and we're united as one people, which we are brothers and sisters. And I'm here with, uh, with Stephen Laforme. He's uh, Stephen Winterhawk, as he's known. He's also the, the elder for the Four Colors Drum Circle. And anytime we come to the medicine garden, regardless of what it is, First, we honor and acknowledge the garden. And so what Steve's going to do, he's going to put some tobacco around the stones that are around the garden here. There's seven, four, seven uh, grandfather stones, grandmother stones, pardon me, and four cardinal stones for the four directions. And they're the grandfathers. And they're called the grandfather teachings. So Stephen is going to acknowledge the, uh, the, um, the sacred space, which it is. Uh, with the different medicines and offer gratitude and thankful thankfulness for for the for uh, pardon me i'm a little bit nervous but that's okay too but that's all part of it <laughs> see there's no mistakes when it comes to uh aboriginal native we don't we're here on the first day hey we goof up a little bit it's okay uh, uh, anish as you know cause are young what is your beautiful name my beautiful name is sedalia andishna cause a key meadow in quay earth medicine woman and Anisha Junakaz Young, what is your beautiful name? Uh, Stephen Winterhawk and Dishnikaz. That's my name uh, that I got in spirit. La Forum is my name that I got from the New Credit Reserve where I was born. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tobacco that I have in my hand and go to each stone around while Sedalia just continues on. Uh, she can talk about what we're what we're here for. Okay, so here we go. Up. And I'll just move over a little bit. So there's the seven grandfather teachings taught by the grandmothers. And uh, I don't have my paper on me, but it's, uh, and somebody else is always going to help me. Um, so it's respect, love, humility, kindness, uh, truth, strength, and basically that, and wisdom is the last. When, and the key thing is, when you have love, you have all the uh, the seven grandfather teachings. So you can have wisdom, but if you don't have love involved in it, then there aren't any teachings. So what Steve is, Steve is going around, so I'll explain to you a, a little bit about the quadrants within the garden. Um, again, this garden has been here for about 11 years. And um, so where, uh, where I am right now, I'm facing the east. And the east is the, um, is the eagle. The animal for the east is the eagle. And the color of the east is, is yellow. And the east also represents birth till about nine years old. And please remember that nothing is written in stone. Uh, when we have different clans, which there are, they have different teachings. And so they vary a little bit, but the intent is the same in honoring the colors. And depending too, uh, geographically where you are, uh, some people may celebrate the, uh, the East as a different color. So just keeping that in mind. So in the East, we have um, all yellow flowers. We call them medicines. There's yellow, there's a yellow cone flower, a brown eyed Susan. And, um, and also there's a different other, other, but they're all yellow. And the medicines that are in here in this quadrant are medicines that the Ojibwe people actually used. So when we're planting anything in the garden, we maintain the integrity of the medicines that they used. So around the garden, we plant other medicines or other plants, but within we try to keep the integrity of the medicines that are not only indigenous to the area, but indigenous to the Ojibwe tribe. So when we walk into the medicine garden here at Heart Lake, we walk in from the east and then we go to the left, which is the south. And the south is marked by red is the color red. So in the south, 
It also represents the red people and the, the east represents the Asian people. So in the, in the south, we have the red-tailed hawk, the mouse, and the coyote. And it's about humility. The, uh, the hawk um, eats the, the, the mouse and the coyote hunts the hawk. So it's about, and it's about relationships. So this is about youth in, in the south. Um, and as we move in the same direction, then we go to the, uh, to the west, which is directly behind me. And the color of the west is black. And black represents the, um, it's black and, and uh, also blue. And the animal for the West is the black, the black bear. And the black bear is in hibernation throughout the winter. And she's uh, waking up in the spring, just like us. We've been stiff, we've been home and all, all uh, bundled up. And we are trying to get out when it comes springtime. So the West represents is about healing. And the West is also, um, it's about, it's the adults, myself, probably not quite in that stage, probably past it a little bit. But anyway, we're adults are in the West. The medicines that are in the West uh, is the sweet grass. And we have uh, hyssop and black eyed, uh, not black eyed Susan, but um, um, the grass. What, what what we have we have Indian mint grass. Uh, we have Indian grass but we also have Elijah blue which is the other color very hard to get black flowers but that's okay we, we're honoring it and so as we move across we come to the north and the north the color is white and that's where the, the white buffalo calf woman and the, and the buffalo in the north we have sage variety types of sage we have asters, we have, um, we have mugwort that we've added, and we have yarrow that's in the north. And yarrow is the medicine, the woman's medicine. And we use, we use the sage in here as well as the mugwort. We use it year round. Uh, we do teachings on how to tie it, how to harvest it, how to make uh, smudge sticks for it. Um, and we use it when anytime we come to the garden, we always do the smudging which is clearing everything, anything that we brought forth, but we, we clear. And then we also put the tobacco down. So the medicines that are in this garden, we do not sell. They're not ever for sale because that's not, uh, that's not the teachings, part of the teachings. Although we're always open and grateful for donations because we are volunteers. We've been looking after the garden uh, for about 10 years now, actually passed. Um, and we are do it on a volunteer basis. And uh, actually we were very uh, honored uh, just recently to win uh, the Continuum Care Award for 2021, which is the first of, of its kind. And so we're very honored and very proud to be part of that. Um, and that doesn't happen by one person. Like me alone, there is no way this could be done. It happens by a whole slew of volunteers and people that are really dedicated to Mother Earth and to really want to give back. And that's really our intention. You know, as if you're in school, if you're in businesses, it's what are you doing for Mother Nature and what are you doing for humanity? And so it's our job, I feel anyway, to pass on information, to pass on teachings so that you take it to the next level. You take it to, that we take care of our, our plants, even the weeds, they have a purpose. Although, you know, it's like the weeds in the thoughts in our mind. That's part of the weeds. That's we, if we live in, in those thoughts, in that negative thoughts, that's what takes over. The same in the garden. If we have sage that is growing in the north, we want the sage to, to thrive. So we have to remove some of the weeds so that it can thrive. And just like bringing good thoughts into our, our head, into our brain, into our being and acting in a good way. That's really what the Medicine Wheel Teachings is about. Also, so, go, go ahead. Sorry, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, so let me take over and let okay, you rest your voice. Okay, thank you. You, you brought us around the circle yes. into, the, into the tree. Yeah. Which is part of the... Which is Come part, over here a little bit. Which is part of uh, oh, this yeah. whole uh, ceremony we're going to do on the September the 30th, which right. is uh, Orange Shirt Day. Yeah. 
And when, as we come around, as Sedalia said, we have the four grandfather stones that they told the knowledge and seven grandmother stones that birthed the knowledge into wisdom. Yeah. So that's the point of where we are. So when we come around the circle, we were, uh, come to the tree, the tree represents uh, uh, its cedar and it represents uh, everlasting life. And it also has a color and it represents Father Sky who, who is blue. And it's a blue fire. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and below it is Mother Earth who is usually green. She has a green fire. So between the two of them, Father Sky and Mother Earth in the native tradition, we believe these two come together, and they do, to create uh, children. We and are the rainbow. <laughs> sometimes we call them the rainbow children. The rainbow, we are the children. Right, yeah. but uh, they also created those children and uh, that went to the residential schools. And in the meantime, uh, they seemed, they, they were planted in the earth. Their remains are still there in spirit. So because of Mother Earth and Father Sky looks after that, they're, mm -hmm. they're in the hands of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. So our ceremony on our, our yellow, uh, yellow shirt day, orange well, shirt orange day, day. <laughs> orange shirt day. Uh, yeah, getting all these colors. All the colors come together. Anyway, our ceremony will be to help wake up and find those children. So we will be doing a, a round dance, which usually a round dance involves people coming together in a community and sharing, and they dance around in a circle, holding hands, almost like a Congo line. So this can go on for hours of, uh, uh, as long as there's new people joining the line, and uh, the people are considering the drumming and coming up with new songs to keep us going. But in our case on, because of this worriness spirit of uh, this virus, COVID, which says we have to keep uh, separate. Social we distance. Can't, uh, social distance, we can't hold on to hands, which is all right, ready for, right for us, because really what we want to do in those days, in uh, September the 30th, is help with the awakening of the children. So those children, except to our imagination and our spirit eyes, those children will seem to be invisible, but they won't, they are there because we know in our hearts that they're there. So what we'll do is we'll, rec we'll ask them to join us in our dance. So our distancing will be between, uh, between each person that mm -hmm. dances, there will be a, an invisible but real spirit child holding on to our hands to dance with us. Mm -hmm. And as we go around and as more children join us and more people join us. We intend to uh, sing songs that will ask all of the children to come out. And join us. So no one is lost, no one is forgotten. So this will be our ceremony that we'll do for that day to recognize those children. And, and at, right from the beginning when the first 215 uh, children were discovered, we started, um, we started putting the orange ribbons uh, on the tree and each one of these ribbons as people come to visit a lot of people know and so one of the things we say when you're putting a ribbon put a prayer with it because that represents a child and so people have put in there's some moccasins there's some shoes we have also put it in put in gloves the orange gloves because being that we're in the garden we work in the garden but children play in the garden so it also represents their hands that they're connected to mother earth and we're acknowledging them. So we always have ribbons on hand so that anybody coming to visit the garden, they will be able to, um, to put, that, put the, a prayer into the, uh, um, in the orange tr in the tree. So, so anyone listening to this uh, ha that have, an, uh, have a feeling that they'd like to contribute can visit the garden at any anytime, time. Absolutely. Anytime, we don't have a time. Yeah. In fact, we're in, uh, what we call native people are in Indian time. So all the things that were done in the past to us, we have a saying, what is done is just begun. Mm -hmm. In Indian time, we can go back and we can change things uh, for me and you and for the children. We can do this. Uh, it re represents what you might know as the serenity prayer. The serenity prayer was, says great spirit or God, 
help me to help me to accept the things I cannot change and change the things that I can change. But the important thing in that serenity prayer is uh, the things that I cannot change. The things I cannot change for in native ways of looking, if we wrote the serenity prayer, we would say, we can change what I did. So I can change what I'm responsible for. So we're calling out for people to not get all uptight about blame but just to accept responsibility for that. And by that act of uh, accepting responsibility, we all gain forgiveness and yeah. we all go forward together because I change me. Yeah. And when I change me, I, that's all I need to change because I'm willing to go with you and dance with you in this circle and dance with the children as though we were all one mm -hmm. and we are all one. So we have these sh these shirts also that uh, on the, on the shirt it says every child matters. Now the key um, interest and the key thing with these shirts is the um, it is not we wanted it so that it's not a commercialized event by any means. We want to bring awareness and we have been doing we've been um, putting shirts out for about, over a, about a month now actually a little bit over. But the key thing is we've we've bought the shirts. Um, the artist gets a portion of the of the um, of the money that we raise. The uh, originator, uh, the printer, who's also um, a youth with a gifted youth, a very gifted youth. It is a, he's a member, and his mom are a member of our circle. So they do the printing, and then the other um, the other goes to uh, the school up in Sioux Lookout, where books will be bought for the children up there new books not second hand not garbage but they will get new books so every money that we've got got for the shirts that are twenty dollars uh, that goes out it's it's dispersed out so so just keeping that in mind but even if you can't get a shirt from us if you wear that shirt our orange shirt that day you're bringing awareness to the world that there's something that we all take responsibility in and we all need to stop and just be in silence and maybe say a prayer. And on that, uh, on that note, she talked about books. So this is not a commercial because I no. want to sell books, but I'm a native author. Mm -hmm. So on that day, I what I decided to do, and up until September the 30th, uh, I decided to sell my book, which is called Alice. And Alice is about residential schools. And artificial intelligence, there's a whole lot more there. But anyway, that's why I wrote it. So I'll sell those books for $10, which is about a buck over my cost for that, for uh, to represent for this, that day. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, you probably have some, some questions from your teachers, from whoever it is that is going to be viewing this. You know, if you stop and, and you have a chance to come out to the Medicine Garden, um, we have connections you can reach out to the TRCA and go into their website and get information about the garden. If you want to have an event when it's available to be at your at your location or in here, we are very proud to be to do that. We've been doing a drumming here, not necessarily always here. We've been drumming for about again ten years, pretty well every uh, Wednesday every week, and most people that are uh, in the drum circle have made their own drum, have handled a hide, it's wet, they put their prayers into it. And so it's very different when you actually make your own drum and you have that intention. And for a lot of people, this is, you know, it's not for you. Honor and respect that too. The time, as long as the seed is planted, that's what it, that's really what it's about. And so um, we hope that you do come and visit. And if you have questions, you can reach out to Stephen Winterhawk at, uh, at simpatico.ca, um, right? Is that correct? Yes, That's correct. Sure. <laughs> Just double checking. And, uh, or your teachers. It's, oh, sorry, it's W Hawk. W Hawk at simpatico.ca. But yeah. there's all kinds of sites. We are here as an information, and really, please don't take this as this is the way that it's done. That is not the intent of putting this out. The intent is to bring awareness that yes, we have a sacred place that people can come and spend some time and hey, listen to our thoughts when we're in the South, 
what's my thoughts about? Maybe I need to go into the north. How are my thoughts changing? It's about self-reflection -re and being mindful of being on this great Mother Earth. Chimigwitch to all, and uh, thank you. And we're working towards truth and reconciliation. Yeah. It, uh, that doesn't say that we have all the truth or uh, whoever, but the truth will come together in the four colors yeah. and then we can reconcile it. For us, we have a silly saying that works for us and work, can work for you. We have, there is no wrong way, there is no right way, there is Ojibwe. <laughs> now that works for us, but yeah. that doesn't mean whatever truth you yeah. find, then yeah. uh, that's what the way it will be, uh, it will be seen. And mm -hmm. uh, all, when all of our truths come together in this medicine wheel garden, which by the way, we consider it to be like the Garden of Eden, that yeah. everybody went and went their ways, with the prophecy or the hope that one day, all these people, everybody will come back to the Garden of Eden, come back to the Medicine Wheel Garden and share their stories and arrive at a truth that's good for everyone. Yeah. Shimigwich. Shimigwich. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Sedalia Miigwech. Mm -hmm. So students, uh, you've been given these little pieces of orange uh, t-shirts and on our orange shirt day. And I just ask you to take a moment to reflect on what you've just heard. Maybe something stands out from the seven grandfather teachings. What is going on in your mind and heart as you listen? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? What is your hope? And I invite you to take a pen and put a message. What's in your heart? What's on your mind? And just write that message on this little piece of paper. And then during this period to bring it down and to tape it on the glass of the library so that it's all through the matrix. It would be like a thousand points of light, a thousand points of, mm -hmm. of hope on mm -hmm. this day. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you very much. Miigwech. Miigwech. September the 30th. Come on out. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank <laughs> you.